The following podcast was recorded on Thursday, February 3rd, 2022, featuring Sam Rines of Arbor Data Science. To hear the podcast in real time, you can sign up for a free trial at arborresearch.com or by emailing Gus Handler directly at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. You can also call Arbor Research and Trading at 1-800-606-1872. Thanks for your time and enjoy the podcast. Welcome everyone to the latest edition of our podcast series, Talking Data. I'm your host, Kristen Radish of Arbor Research and Trading, joined today by our commentator, Sam Rines of Arbor Data Science. Today, Sam will give us his thoughts on why a weaker labor market in January doesn't really matter and what could knock the Fed off its path. Sam, let's start off today talking about full employment. Uh, thanks, Kristen. So one of the really interesting parts about the current Fed narrative is that we are nearing full employment or at full employment. They really don't seem that focused on the labor market in general, which is kind of interesting because if you flip to the first chart here, when you look at the number of people employed, we're still about half, uh, about 5 million people away, five and a half, give or take million people away from the pre-COVID trend in terms of the total number of people employed. So it just doesn't look, from at least from an overall employment perspective, that we're really getting that close to full employment in the United States. The Fed really doesn't seem to care, and it's not going to care. I think that's a really important part of the discussion here is that the Fed really doesn't care that the U.S. doesn't have as many people employed as it did previously. That's just, it's not in its equation right now. And that's because of inflation, right? It is, it has gone all in on battling inflation. Uh, the market has priced in Fed rate hikes and it's very comfortable uh, with this type of market. And it, it, if you flip to the next slide, it's, it's again, a pretty stark, uh, representation of how far away the labor market really is from its pre-COVID levels, you don't even have participation near where it was pre-COVID. You know, it had crept a little higher, uh, particularly for uh, the 16 plus crowd uh, going into COVID uh, from its, call it 2012 to 2018 type range. But we're not even back there, right? We still have a full percentage point uh, participation before we begin to really see the overall labor market heal the way that the Fed typically would have uh, let it run. Again, it's all about inflation uh, and this this labor market number that's coming out on Friday probably isn't going to matter much. Um, the, the interesting part of the labor market here uh, that I think is relatively overlooked, uh, but also pretty important, is this next chart, um, the labor force participation of the young, the 16 to 24 year olds, that's back to above its pre-COVID trend, which is really strange and interesting uh, because we hear a lot about millennials and Gen Z not really going into the labor market, not working as much as they were, but in uh, the data does not support that whatsoever. Uh, I call, I like to call this the TikTok and Instagram trend. Uh, right when you're 16, when you're 16 to 24, it's a lot easier to have a quote unquote side gig or have your own. We call it single person entity uh, that can make money on Instagram, make money on Twitter, make money on TikToks, uh, etc. So I think there's a little bit of a trend change uh, that's taking place in the labor market that's worth paying attention to. Um, that's we'll call it underneath the uh, the overall level of employment, and that is that you had a shift to older workers for a very long time. Uh, you had the 55 plus crowd, the 65 plus crowd, even the 75 plus crowd participating at much higher rates than they had in the past. Uh, that's begun to look a little bit different. Uh, we had a lot of retirements during COVID, uh, and the young crowd is beginning to pick up a little bit of the slack. So it's going to be interesting to see how the overall labor force really evolves here. And that's somewhat important for the Fed uh, on two levels. One, it's lower wages in general, right? When you have uh, people retiring at the 55 plus level, uh, that brings down wages and that helps actually deflate uh, the inflation numbers, uh, right? If, you're, if you have people rolling off the books that were making 
six figures and you're replacing them with millennials and Gen Z that aren't necessarily at the senior levels yet, uh, that's going to be a positive mix shift on the wage front. That's going to have some effect on inflation going forward. And that's going to be something that the Fed needs to pay attention to uh, in the future. That's not a current thing. Uh, the current thing that's going on is this next slide that I think is really important. Um, and it's the uh, to the third point, and this is why January just doesn't matter for the Fed. It is not going to knock it off. Uh, it's tightening uh, expectations. Uh, if anything, it's probably going to give them a little bit of reassurance uh, that the labor market is getting tighter. Uh, and that's uh, because the reference week when they took the survey for uh, the BLS was where that little arrow is, uh, the week of peak COVID uh, for January. That knocked a lot of people uh, out of the labor force, uh, staying home. That is considered to be unemployed by uh, the BLS, um, which is going to be a huge issue um, going forward. So is forward. it fair to say this January data is pretty noisy? Uh, January data is going to be horribly noisy. And what's interesting, the ADP uh, number uh, it was like 300K uh, down um, for uh, January. That data is typically noisy uh, anyway, and they don't even count people who are absent from work as unemployed, uh, which is worth kind of keeping in the back of our minds that the BLS number could be worse because of the way that they treat that absenteeism. Uh, if you have uh, people that didn't show up to work because they had COVID, that's going to be considered unemployed for the BLS. That was not the case for ADP. And so it's going to be extraordinarily noisy. I think you know, you're likely to see a pretty bad number, but the Fed doesn't care, right? This isn't going to be news to the Fed that COVID, that COVID absenteeism is affecting the data. Uh, and if you get a number that's, call it surprisingly not bad, the Fed's going to point to that and say, hey, look, the labor market's very tight. We're not creating as many jobs. The economy's still growing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so it's it's kind of a lose-lose for anyone that really wants this number to knock the, to give the Fed a little bit of a dovish tilt. It's just not going to happen. Uh, there's really, the only way that you're going to have the Fed knocked off its current tightening bias uh, is going to be uh, inflation breaking, and that doesn't that data comes out once a month. Um, you're not going to see that break probably until March or April at the earliest as base effects roll in and you begin to have some downward pressure just on the math. Um, and there's another side of it that I think is really important uh, that if COVID had a huge effect on the January labor data, the COVID numbers going down and going down pretty quickly, particularly in um, the last few weeks, that's going to be a tailwind to the way that the Fed approaches the labor market. They're going to look at the data and say, well, if COVID had that big of an effect in January, the February numbers are likely to be much, much better as COVID begins to become less of an issue and we approach the uh, spring and people being able to go outside more, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So they're going, it's almost going to be a counterintuitive signal uh, that the Fed is going to be able to tighten and be able to tighten uh, on their current trajectory of, call it three to seven hikes, wherever they land in there. Any final thoughts for the day, Sam? Uh, it's really uh, the, the the kicker, I think, uh, for understanding uh, why tomorrow's, uh, why Friday's uh, data doesn't really matter that much. Uh, is going to be the composition of it. Uh, if you see a significant decline in individuals who are in the leisure and hospitality uh, market, uh, that was the big hit to the ADP number. Uh, the, the Fed's going to look at that and go, yeah, we we, we know. Uh, that's not that's not news. Uh, and those numbers are likely to snap back in February. So while we see, call it negative three to 500K for January, I think that's it's a pretty fair number to think about. Um, you're going to have a very large February print, right? That's, that's, the, that's the key. You're going to continue to have this volatility in the labor market as you begin to have Omicron work its way through the system. Well, thanks for your thoughts today, Sam. And as always, thank you everyone for joining us. 
As a reminder, Arbor Research and Trading is an institutional research and brokerage firm. Our two most prominent offerings are Bianca Research and Arbor Data Science. For any questions or further information, please contact Gus Handler at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. Thanks for joining. Have a great day.